Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Learn Smart Coding. Today we are going to talk about the asynchronous programming and I am going to explain you how to use the async await keywords which is a very popular one and good to use in your day to day programming. And it is of course easy to use, you just need to understand few core concepts of how to use it and that's it, you should be good to go. So before we get into the video, if you like my videos, subscribe to my channel, add a comment in the comment section, give a thumbs up and don't forget to click the bell icon. Alright, asynchronous programming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a piece of code and tell you how a synchronous method is used and how an asynchronous methods are written and how easy it is to write an async await keyword and use it as asynchronous programming. Okay, so back on the screen, if you look at the screen, I have a, a controller class and this is only for the demo purpose so just understand how it is going to be written and you can apply the same principle in your programmings okay wherever you're working whatever you're doing in your project you can apply that logic it's exactly same so i have a temp controller and i'm injecting a db context and uh, so that we're going to uh, do some work with the db context uh, and see how you can make utilize of the existing inbuilt asynchronous methods okay and i'll also tell you how to use the async keywords okay so that's our goal on the screen if you look at this controller it's a temp controller i am injecting a db context which is of type essential product db context okay this is only for demo purpose so here i have a web api method a get method and basically what it is doing is it is calling another asynchronous method get products and passing a key a word called baby it's called a search word okay so this method here on the 25 line what it is doing is it is accepting that search parameter and we are trying to go to the product table and we have applied a var condition and we are seeing whether the search word is available in the name and if yes whichever matches we are converting into two list and this one will have list of products if there is only one match one product will come but it is still going to be a list of product okay and if there is no match, of course there is nothing to be returned and this is returning a list of product and that is what we were eventually returning to the callers now this is synchronous method right so let's understand why do we need async keyword and await keyword what is asynchronous programming so if you have any io bound input output bound needs like for example accessing a data over the network or from the database or reading writing something from the file system any of these things called uh, you know the biggest operations you'll have to utilize this asynchronous programming okay and this also can be applied on the cp bound code meaning you have a complex logic uh, it's not even calling any uh, database or any network stuff but it has a very expensive uh, call a complex logic which is taking more than few seconds or something like that right so during that scenario also it is preferable to write an asynchronous code okay so that's the uh, co you know the purpose of asynchronous programming so let's make utilize of this so what if if I'm a programmer I wanted to write asynchronous a uh, code instead of writing a synchronous code so now what we are going to see is we are going to see how to convert this synchronous method into an asynchronous method okay so before we get into that let's understand some key pieces the first one we know already that when to use this asynchronous programming right so both io bound and cp bound operations then we need to use it number two the asynchronous code always always uses task of t okay so it could be a task of t or a task now let me translate this into a, a synchronous way so task means it is void okay so if you have a method with a void signature a void keyword as a written type written type meaning void means it is not going to return anything right so if you have a void keyword that is equivalent is task and what is task of uh, t so basically if you have returning a method with a string type or a list of sting sting right and then we are surrounding this with the task so t is a generic type t could be anything it could be string integer float list or anything anything that is what t okay so now this is the second point 
now the third one right you need to mark the particular method with the async keyword okay and then whenever you like this so you need to mark the method with the async keyword and then that will allow you to use an await keyword inside the method okay so one more thing that you should remember is await can be used only within the asynchronous method and only inside the body so enough of story let's convert this so i'm going to copy this and paste it and apply all the principles that we just spoke about so the method has to be having a keyword called async we are marking this method as async and this method becomes an async what is the second one that we wanted to do we wanted to always return a task of t here in our case it's a task of list of product so here we need to bring in a namespace control period will ask us to bring it and that's under the system dot threading dot task so we brought this now every single asynchronous method to to know that this method is an asynchronous method it is preferable to write a word called async a c n async word in the end of the method so this method is synchronous so get products this method is asynchronous so it's get products async okay so that's the thing that you need to do now once we write this you are now allowed to write a await keyword so to which method you can write an await keyword let's get to here so here what we are doing db context dot product dot var and then finally converting into to list right so let me delete this and type a dot and show you what and all is available like i said any method that is marked with a async word at the end of the method name that is an asynchronous method so to list we have to list but we also have something called to list async okay so that won't come by default you if you uh, you know bring in the namespace microsoft entity framework dot core it will uh, this method is inbuilt so it is coming again now we are dealing with the db context so that's why this namespace were brought in but this asynchronous logic is across different concepts so if you are using file system related to those namespace there will be a uh, asynchronous method like for example read read async write write async copy copy async right you can you can try it out so let's stick to this now if you see because we are using a asynchronous method instead of a list of product it is returning a task of list of product okay so if you look at this here task of list of product okay we have marked this as async and now what we need to do is we need to mark this one in with the keyword called await so as soon as i type await you see all the error went off very simple that's it you're done okay i'll explain you what magic this async await will do so we will repeat this one more time you're marking a method with the async keyword converting your return type with the task of that type and writing a async word as per the coding standard at the end of this method to tell callers that this method is a asynchronous method and then you should be having a asynchronous operation in our case it is dot to list async we are calling an inbuilt method once you have any of these method you can put an await keyword and you're just returning it okay now let me tell you what happens this magic okay so think of this let me uh, give you an example with a store okay so so what happens when you write an async uh, await keyword it's like this right as soon as the the uh, the code starts executing and the the code knows like you know the execution come to know that hey there is a await keyword then the main thread which was executing this process right will be suspended when the await keyword is applied it suspends the calling method and yields the control back to its caller until the awaited task is completed so whoever is calling this method okay and if this line of code is taking let's say 5 seconds so in a synchronous method what will happen the next line of code right if there is a line of code here 
it will wait for 5 seconds and then go and execute this line of code and then this line of code right line by line but in asynchronous method what will happen as soon as this comes into picture it will suspend the call and returns the call to the original caller which is our main thread and when that happens right now the main thread is free it can go and use uh, and work for other incoming request okay let me tell the same example in a different way think of this you are going to a walmart or any big uh, shop in your country right it could be any any other shop in your country so when a customer comes first customer comes and in the front of the you know store there is a manager the first customer comes he asks some work like he asks a product this manager goes inside and searches the products and comes quickly if he knows where it is and it is easy to get that okay before he comes there is a second customer who is waiting after the first customer so now the second customer has to wait until the first customer goes out right because he the first customer is also waiting now if we apply this asynchronous programming what will happen is the store manager gets the request from the first customer he passes this to his lower level employees or who are working in each shelf or each uh, area of the store right which means he goes takes the request from the first customer he quickly goes and distribute to a different person to go and do that work in our programming what will happen the main thread will take the request will try to process and will give it to a different thread different threads are nothing but the different uh, employees who are inside the store who is reporting to the manager okay but the main thread is the final one who will respond to the customer right in our case it will respond to the request so for clear now think of this if so many customer comes at the same time if we have written a synchronous code what will happen the same manager has to go and work for every single request and then the hundredth customer will wait for so many minutes right or so many hours in a real time which will be avoided in asynchronous programming so if five customer comes a 10 customer comes he takes the first customer request pass it to the other person the other person is going and searching the product meanwhile he comes back and asks the second customer hey tell me what do you want similarly he takes the request from the second customer goes pass it to the other person that person is going and searching the product okay now when this is happening all these fellows who are working for that manager is trying to find the product and coming back one by one to this manager and giving whatever he asked in turn what the manager will do he will take that product and give it to those customer who were asked and they were standing in the line so this is what the asynchronous programming right so we are uh, offloading some work to different threads in a programmatical so we are actually offloading the work and uh, giving it to a different thread that is what in programming language i can explain you okay now let's see how to use this asynchronous method that we just created right so what i'm going to do is here instead of the synchronous method i'm going to convert this asynchronous method now as soon as you see i've put this right um this will not execute so remember one more thing asynchronous methods that you should use from starting to the end okay uh, it's not like one place you use and other place you don't uh, use it in the right way so in our case what we need to do we need to convert this method also into an asynchronous method so how do we do that same principle async task of i action result or and then what do we do this we can name it as async and now we need to apply await keyword and that's it right same principle and you can also have many keywords here so for example we're trying to do one more item like uh, let's let's copy paste this and see what we are trying to do okay so this what this is doing is uh, instead of contains it starts with okay you can actually uh, combine all these things into one place but just for the demo purpose I'm explaining you that you can have more than one await in this method okay so i can have any number of operations within this method i'm trying to tell you all what i'm trying to tell you is it is doing different different work okay so in this case same logic this comes in when it says await it 
it disconnects the call okay for however long it is taking suspends the call go back and serve the other request and come back like it will do one by one like this right once everything is done we will uh, collect all these things and send the final result okay so we so now you know how to use async await in c sharp okay and um, very simple right so like i said this is for the entity framework core you can you can write your own asynchronous method and you can use that so let's say uh, if not this entity framework core or in anything uh, that you're using like file system or file io operations or any any other thing any namespace within uh, the microsoft most of them will have uh, synchronous and the asynchronous method like i said uh, to list and to do list like so like i said it's to list and to list async similarly um, you have first or default and also equivalent asynchronous method called first or default async okay so you have all synchronous and asynchronous method you just need to use it properly okay now hope you understood how to use async await and uh, make use of this beautiful thing right this is one of the important interview uh, concept that you will encounter in your interview if you're trying for a job and um, i hope i made you clear something in this video let me know in the comment section what you felt about this video and uh, give me a thumbs up and also comment out if you have any other questions or you are looking for a specific topic in c sharp thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel like it share it comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon